All right, welcome back to Why in the Morning. And if it's Tuesday, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 Channel. Is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me across all my social. In this particular session, we look at tourism in Ambo County and opportunities available for the, for the youth. So if you've been to Ambo County, you'll agree with me. It's fantastic. Uh, the... The land there is so fertile, beautiful sceneries. And if you are also a lover of hiking, and uh, Dr. Joanna has also told me that <laughs> there's a lot of other activities that you can actually engage in, like zip lining. In studio, I am joined by Dr. Joanne Mwende Kema. She is the Embu County Minister for Trade, Tourism, Investment, and Industrialization. Thank you very much for creating time, Dr. Joanne. Thank you, Michelle. So, in a brief, in, very, in a very brief way, Dr. John, so what was your uh, previous portfolio in Embu County before you part partake the activities as the uh, minister, county minister for trade, tourism, uh, investment and industrialization? Thank you, Michelle. Yes. I have been um, in a couple of uh, departments. Okay. I started out in 2017 as a County Minister for Gender, Children, Culture, and Social Services, and then moved on to education, later moved on to health, and I'm right now coming from youth oh. <laughs> empowerment and sports. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. For someone who's watching this, our conversation right now, and I've never been to Embu County, what would you tell them? And tell us a couple of beautiful sceneries that you can find in Embu County. I'll tell them that Embu mm -hmm. is a land of opportunities. Embu is a beautiful a county with a lot of endowments, natural endowments, mm -hmm. beautiful sceneries all across Embu North, Embu East, Embu South, we have uh, um, very many tourist attractions and don't forget Embu sits right very close to Mount Kenya. Mm -hmm. So one of our attractions is just that we are the, on the southern route to Mount Kenya. Mm -hmm. And as you go to Mount Kenya through Embu, you come across beautiful um, lakes, the Karls Lakes, so there are three lakes on a row. Uh, the Embu South, uh, the Mount Kenya South route uh, through Embu happens to be the best and the shortest to Mount Kenya. Okay. We are just about 22 kilometers from Mount Kenya. Um, Embu County is home to, of course, Macadamia. Mm -hmm. It is home to some of the, the, the world's best coffee. I think we do, uh, we are the top, one of the top uh, coffees in the global market. Uh, we produce a lot of uh, macadamia nuts. We are also tea growers. Embu County is home to one of the biggest game reserves. Mm the Mwea Game Reserve. The Mwea Game And we host two of the big five. We have the buffalo and an abundance of elephants. Mm -hmm. Embu County, we also host five out of the seven fox dams. Mm -hmm. We have a beautiful, beautiful uh, Kinara Beach down in Rakanau. Mm -hmm. That's in very south. Embu County, we have a beautiful camp called Ndunda. Ndunda in Kiembu means fruit. Mm -hmm. And at Camp Ndunda, you have the biggest swing in Africa. Wow. Swings your stress away okay. right there. Mm -hmm. We also have a zip lining at Camp Ndunda. Mm -hmm. Embu County is right now hosting a premiere movie called Medicine Man. Oh, yes. 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 And through the Medicine Man, mm -hmm. we are, um, we, which I would like to appreciate the Kenya Film Commission for funding, we actually 
been able to give a lot of youths jobs mm -hmm. through the, the, the producers, Betty Kadungu, mm -hmm. and she's employed a lot of youths in that. Okay. We have a talent academy at Hembo County to the youths. Hey. That is oh. the best news, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It feels like definitely Embu County is the land of opportunity. It is a place to be. Place we to be. have a talent academy, mm -hmm. and I think we are one of the few talent academies in this country. Mm -hmm. Believe in me, in the eastern region, I don't know of any. Uh, so far, I'm not sure there's any other county with a talent academy. Mm -hmm. And through the talent academy, our youths have been well empowered. Recently, we started something called Mwegunye. Mm. for the youths. Okay. It's a um, space where the youths that are talented in creative arts, uh, drawing, painting, that kind of art, mm -hmm. they are finding business. Does that fall under the Talent Academy? Or is it, it, falls under, it falls under the Talent Academy. But as you know, because we are one county, Embo County, we work together, we are interconnected. Mm -hmm. So while the youth department is the one that is um, uh, tasked with empowering youths in terms of skills, in terms of opportunities, mm -hmm. at the tourism department we realize that we can actually loop in the youths with their talents to, and market their talent, market their artistic creations and now they're making business. We actually look into linking them with the uh, um, external market. All right. And they're good making news. good money, Absolutely you know. Good yes. News. All right, for someone who's equally listening to us and uh, they'll be wondering uh, how much of an effect has COVID-19 impacted uh, this particular program? And also looking at the tourism sector. So what is the impact of COVID-19 like on the tourism employment also? Thank you, Michelle. Now, as you know, COVID-19, first of all, uh, caught everybody unawares. Unfortunately, when disasters happen, they just happen. Uh, as, as a tourist, uh, tourism department, we found ourselves caught up. One, you know that tourism depends a lot on people traveling, people moving from place to place. When people were locked down, when people were um, constricted from movement, then it meant that they could not tour as usual, they could not travel, they could not visit. And therefore, that way then, um, it's like business came to a standstill. But then we keep going. Initially, we thought this was going to end shortly, but then it's been on and on, and we realized we needed to do something. And that's how first we gathered the youths, Mm -hmm. and said, what do you have? We realized they have something that they could work on as individuals and bring to the market. And that's how we came up with the Mwegunye Arts. So they call themselves Mwegunye Arts. Oh. Mwegunye means shade mm -hmm. in Kiembu. Okay. And we also started um, thinking film is very interconnected with tourism. And you can do, you can develop film from your living room, mm -hmm. from wherever. Yeah, with something as simple as your phone. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we started encouraging our people to do film, to come up with film. Mm -hmm. And thanks to the Kenya Film Commission, with whom we are collaborating right now, we have an MOU. And through the guidance and support of the Kenya Film Commission, we've found our youths getting together, producing short films, and, and benefiting from them. Um, we also do appreciate that when it comes to business, mm -hmm. you look for the easiest route to making money, because business is about trading. It's about selling something, service, selling goods. Absolutely. And so we came to realize that armed with skills, with, with film production skills, armed with um, talent, you just need to tweak something very small and get into business. And so our youth in Embo County, uh, a lot of them, quite a number of them have been trained on film production. 
some of them have come back to the Talent Academy and they are honing their skills in theater, in music, in, you know, different talents. And that way, then we have kept them busy and we have also helped them get into business. Oh. Uh, on the other front, um, I would say the traditional tourism has been well, very well constrained. Um, we had hoped that, uh, you know, after what looked like uh, COVID had ended, mm -hmm. that uh, would would pick up, but it's, it's not looking very good. But we're optimistic, right. and so we 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 are also now beginning to say, okay, we have COVID compliance regulations, and we need to work out to see how this fits into business, mm -hmm. because if COVID continues and people still have to eat, people still have to do business, people still need to move. Uh, at least the elephant will not tell you, go back, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have come. You can wear your mask and still meet the elephant. Yes. You can wear your mask and still meet to the buffalo. Absolutely. Yes. And also go to these beautiful scenery. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Some of the activities like the zip lining yeah. they, they don't need uh, crowds. Absolutely. And you can zip line uh, five meters away from one another. And enjoy it's yourself. Possible. And enjoy yourself. There. So um, I think all is not lost. Mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's, there's a lot of hope. Okay. And uh, for us, we also have lots of hills. You know, we have lots and lots of rocks. You told me earlier that you've been to Embu. Yes. And we have an abundance of rocks mm. and waterfalls. In fact, I think the next round when we review our... <laughs> 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 we shall see land of waterfalls. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> yes. So we, let's go back to the Talent Academy. Yes. So who is eligible to be part of the Talent Academy? Is it just uh, the youth from Embu County? And uh, what is the procedure for these young people to get in the Talent Academy and are they required to pay any sort of any amount? Um, let me pay a tribute to His Excellency, our governor, okay. Martin Nyego Ambora. Okay. That is actually his, his vision. And, and um, he said, no, the youth don't have money. Okay. The youth are looking for opportunities. Absolutely, very true. The youth need space where they can um, grow their talents, where they can be uh, supported and therefore our talent academy is absolutely free for Embu residents. Guys, did you just hear that? <laughs> <laughs> so if you're from and Embu, that yes. is an opportunity for you. <laughs> absolutely free mm -hmm. and also um, we have experts. The county government has employed a lot of experts to support mm -hmm. the youths. We have experts in film production, we have experts in music, experts in the spoken word, mm -hmm. writing, anything you want. Mm. We are powerhouse. So they, they just have to show up? They just need to show up. Okay. Yes. All right, so at the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife in mid-March 2020 uh, set aside 500 million Kenyan shillings uh, for, the, for the country post-COVID-19 recovery plan, uh, what are the mitigation measures uh, plan, um, what are the mitigation measures are there to provide uh, strong support for the tourism sector? Well, I would speak as, as the Ember County yes. because we Please. are here to see the money. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we are yet to see the money. I believe it's still on the way. Mm -hmm. And I pray that it arrives in good mm -hmm. time okay. for us to mm -hmm. mitigate. Mm -hmm. But uh, as a county, mm. one of the things that we're doing is, is to open up some of the routes. Like I've told you that we are the shortest route to Mount Kenya. Oh, yes. And that route is actually very friendly. It's the route you'd want to take if you're a lazier person. <laughs> uh, it's a route that is friendly to the uh, elderly, persons with uh, you know, physical challenges. It's very friendly, but it is a route that is not used, that is, has not been used, and partly because it is yet to be um, cleared. So one of the things that we're looking to doing is to clear that route. And we're also looking at expanding, you know, we're as doing a good, big campaign for the Mayor Game Reserve. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the challenges 
which is not directly related to COVID is that somehow, you know, when people have some of these endowments, natural endowments, they're just there, you know. They're just there. They're just part of us. They're mm. just so uh, for a long time, we did not quite focus on, on, on it. But now we are beginning uh, serious campaigns around uh, marketing and where game reserve. I'm sure maybe of late you've seen that we've increased traffic that side, we've mm. increased uh, some communication on social media. Recently we had a big team uh, of two operators from Nairobi, mm. more than 54 two operators actually came to Embu to just visit the game reserve. Mm. And so those are some of the things we're doing. Also places like in Nara Beach, you know our beach that nobody really bothers about. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we are getting our feet back onto the ground mm -hmm. and we're seeing that even the COVID period has given us like time to think, to refocus. And because business has been low in many areas, then this was one way we also realized, okay, here is good business, which needs very little mm -hmm. and which people can also do while they're wearing masks and while they're still going through the COVID, um, you know, challenges. Mm -hmm. So that is what we're doing. Right. And, and we also, like I've told you, um, focusing on film. I have told you about Medicine Man. It's, yes. a, big, it's a big thing. It's we a are premium going there. movie. We are going there. We are, going <laughs> there. are we yes. getting there? I yes. know that you were on site, uh, was it last month? Like a few, around the late last month yes. you, know, you were on site with the guys uh, with your team yes. and also courtesy of also the kenya film commission and yes. helping you guys come up with that amazing film tell us what about what's uh, uh, the medicine man all about just briefly <laughs> as you move <laughs> as you move forward the medicine man yeah. <laughs> is betty kabungu's uh -huh. <laughs> production mm -hmm. actually um it talks about it it's uh, like a conflict between two brothers mm -hmm. Uh, over, you know, it's about modernity, modern medicine, and traditional medicine. Okay. And one brother believes so totally in traditional medicine. Oh, right. The other one believes so totally in modern medicine. Modern. And so this sort of conflict with one thinking, no, 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 you can't go that route. You can't go modern medicine. You know, we know this traditional medicine has worked all through. Why are you trying to pull the people away from traditional medicine? And the other brother thinking mm -mm, you can't go there mm -hmm. it's too late you know we've been through this for many years now we need to grow up we need to join the rest of the world mm -hmm. so there is a conflict oh, yeah. now for the rest of the details yes. please watch the movie we'll watch the it's movie coming. yeah when it come out, <laughs> comes out and then please. one thing that i w i want to like uh, uh, congratulate you and your team is the fact that the whole uh, production team is full of young people i've seen images yes. and also on facebook and it's just Filled with young people. And you know That's what? Amazing. Let me tell you, it's in Kiembu. Yeah. So all yeah. those young people you're seeing there, mm -hmm. they're speaking in Kiembu. I hope there will be subtitles for us. Oh yeah, we'll do that for <laughs> the... <laughs> <laughs> of course, for the sake of the rest of the population. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're very proud that this is done in Kiembu. Okay. I know many people, many young people especially, mm -hmm. have neglected uh, mother tongue because they think it's... Uh, it's not the in thing. It's not the in thing. But you know what? Mother tongue is the in thing Absolutely. still. Absolutely. Embracing our own culture, telling yes. our own stories. Yes. Yeah. If you, when you tell your story in your own language, mm -hmm. it feels sweeter. Okay. It speaks to the soul. Mm. Yes. It speaks to your people. Yes. <laughs> so what are some of uh, general recovery pathways for actors in the tourism industry? People who own companies, tour and travels, and they've just been hit so hard during this time of pandemic, and they're just trying to get back to the business. I'll tell you something. The reason sometimes we suffer so much is because we keep looking at what is lost. Mm. If you can just turn, there will be an open window the other side. And so I would encourage people to not continue focusing on what is going, what is gone, what is lost. Let them figure out if this is not working what else can work? Mm -hmm. If you're, you're keeping chickens and you've realized chicken disease is too common in your place, try some pig farming. Hmm. Try some fish farming. Okay. So, yes, 
there has been um, a big uh, downturn, but all hope is not lost. There is hope. And like I'm, I'm telling you, we just hosted more than 54 tour companies in Embo. What does that tell you? They're looking up. They're beginning to re recognize some, so th there are some other places that maybe you, you are used to taking tourists only to mm -hmm. uh, very far destinations. Mm -hmm. If you're wearing a mask and you're traveling very far, definitely you'll be very, very tired. Mm -hmm. But Embu is just down here. It's just two hours from Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And so uh, two operators are beginning to look elsewhere, to look uh, to different routes from where they traditionally have been taking uh, tourists. And we're also looking at tourism from other perspectives, you know. And then the other, the other, the other aspect is getting more of the, the, I don't like to call them lower populations, but the bottom of pyramid people, mm -hmm. populations, people don't think about them for tourism. Mm -hmm. But you know, they are a big, big deal for tourism. And I'll tell you why. First, Wherever that tourism, wherever you're touring, you're going to, there will be people. How are the communities behaving? How are they receiving the guests? How are they behaving? What is it, the security situation? Mm -hmm. what, is the, what is the culture? What are the uh, cultural aspirations of those people? What are their attitudes to guests, to visitors? All those things, if you try to pull them together, you can gain much more. You know, you can begin to pick up uh, tourism. So for us, and you asked about how we are trying to recover tourism. Yes. And part of it is just going down to the village, getting back to the people and helping them appreciate nature, mm. appreciate that tourism is not for the person coming from very far, mm -hmm. it is also theirs. Domestic tourism. Yes, mm -hmm. domestic tourism. Helping them appreciate that um, they are also players in the tourism industry. Remember, like I keep saying, even an individual is a tourism site. <laughs> 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 I, I watch thousands of people who visited South Africa to mm -hmm. just take a look at Mandela mm. live. You know. Beijo. Yeah. Just to set eyes on Mandela. So was it Mandela himself a tourism site? Uh, he was. Yes. And so people as individuals can also be tourism sites. And so other than uh, now continue thinking when will the, the flights, whatever, start flowing, it is time to say from Nyeri to Embu is just about an hour. Let's go to Embu. Mm. Let's go to Nyeri. Let's to Tharaka is just next door. I think we need to come up with another formula for inter-county tours and so that we continue supporting our tourism. But the locals themselves, if they have the necessary fire, tourism can stand, okay. even in these COVID times. So we, 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 we are working on a strategy to get the community members right at the lowest point, the smallest village, mm -hmm. to appreciate tourism. And we're also digging deeper to see what is it within the communities that can be um, foregrounded, that can be... Um, improved so that the communities themselves, the community members begin to appreciate and to interact with tourism uh, in its original form. And then uh, once they do that, then they can also begin to support environment. One of the initiatives also is to get the, the, you know, the communities to environmental conservation. If they plant a tree, uh, one tree, one tree there, one tree there, one tree there. Eventually you have a forest within the village and um, people will, you know, integrate, interact more mm -hmm. and, and, and tourism will thrive that Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Yes. Imagine if you have a thousand people mm -hmm. visiting a little community park every week and paying a little money that will give us eventually more than a couple of tourists coming from another country Absolutely. that will the come just exposure. once a year. Yeah, the exposure yes. will be immense. Yes, yeah. and then I'd like us to just debunk this theory that tourists are people from afar. From afar. That tourists are people from with people with... 
other colors. <laughs> so we should be. just embrace the fact that uh, we, as Kenyans, we can also you know tour our different counties and enjoy ourselves, beautiful yes. sceneries and uh, uh, the wildlife. Absolutely. So. One thing that I've actually identified with you, just talking to you, one thing that I can pick, you are very passionate about these particular projects. <laughs> you have a way of just uh, <laughs> influencing someone to just actually even visualize the whole project, and it's very persuasive, and for that, I, it's, it's amazing, I guess. Thank so, you. Um, w when you look at uh, the whole situation of COVID and the situation we are in tourism, I would like to move from that, but as we wind up on this particular uh, uh, session of looking at COVID and the impact, let's look at uh, how prepared are we for the future, for the uncertain future uh, when it comes to tourism uh, back in uh, Embu County. Um, thank you. I'll say Embu County, we are prepared. Mm -hmm. Remember, Embo County, I forgot to mention that we are one of the hospitals. Okay. Our, our, our Embu Teaching and Referral Hospital mm -hmm. is one of the best in the country. Actually, I think we're just next to Kenyatta Hospital. Oh, right. Next to Kenyatta National Hospital. Mm -hmm. You know what? Embu Teaching and Referral Hospital mm -hmm. has brain surgeries. More than, I, I think we have done uh, more brain surgeries than... than any other hospital in this country mm -hmm. and uh, recently we put up our isolation center mm -hmm. we have good enough facilities for isolation okay. uh, COVID-19 uh, isolation wards and you know we, we are up to the game I, I would say in terms of preparation mm -hmm. we are ready but mm -hmm. I would also want to say God has been gracious to us we haven't had as many cases mm -hmm. And while this be the case, I would like to urge citizens of Embo County and the entire country to just continue being vigilant. We cannot afford to be careless. And I know when there are prolonged disasters, when uh, disasters are prolonged, people have, uh, they, there's a sense of fatigue that sets in. Mm -hmm. And people begin to feel like, ah, this is taking too long, it's too much. I mean, no, 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 we've been doing it for too long. I would like to tell Kenyans let's be serious let us not give up let us not slow down let us not slacken we need to keep the fire until covid is out and out kabisa mm -hmm. Very true. yes okay yes so dr john uh from your observation and i'd like to find out so from our training institutions uh we have uh, uh are they offering essential skills, facilities, that is in terms of technology to prepare, just to prepare our students, our youth, to just uh, deal with challenges when it comes to the market de demand, when it comes to employment? Okay, thank you, Michelle. You know, one of the issues of the youth in this century is the lack of soft skills, I would say. Many youths... Lack of? Soft skills. Okay, yes. Many youths, mm -hmm. they have trained, they have the hard skills, I call them. Mm -hmm. They were trained in technology to do this and that and that. But they don't have the software that moves that skill from where it is to the market. They don't have the skills to place their skills on the market. You get me? Okay. They lack the skills to interact with the market, mm -hmm. appropriate skills. For instance, there are very many youths today that cannot communicate. And I'll give you an example. <laughs> a youth walks into my, my office and says, I want a job. Wow. Mm -hmm. I want a job. I want a job. And this youth has his trousers turned up and his shoes unpolished. Yes. And he wants a job. What is he armed with? Be calm, mm -hmm. fine, intelligent, sharp, good good grades mm -hmm. but grades alone cannot sell you mm -hmm. in the marketplace mm -hmm. and so what i would like to encourage our youths to do is to equip themselves with the soft skills because the soft skills sell faster mm -hmm. than the hard skills mm -hmm. what do i mean the first time you meet somebody you don't ask do you have a degree you say hello mm -hmm. yes and they respond and based on how they respond 
you can carry on the conversation or just quit the conversation, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yes. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. A lot of our youth are not able to communicate. Mm -hmm. They don't have the right words, they don't have the right tone, they don't have the right rhythm, they don't, all these things. Mm -hmm. And then, they also lack interactive skills. They lack social skills. Mm -hmm. They lack skills of empathy. I was in the bank some time back, mm -hmm. and I was expectant. And I said to this youth, excuse me, can, I, can you please just pay for me this bill? And the guy, the young man looked at me and said, no. Hmm. That is clearly a lack of social skill. Mm -hmm. um, if our youths can agree mm -hmm. to learn what they need to learn, apart from the BCOMs, the IT, the whatever, all this, once they have the soft skills, they will be able to sell. I believe they still work. There is enough work, okay. but also the matter of integrity. I was speaking to some youth, and they said, one of them said, you know, in my class, everybody is looking to graduate and go get bribes, go take bribes. They want to be rich, mm. and they realize that they cannot be rich um, unless they take bribes. I said, oh, how sad. Wow. So integrity is a serious matter. And I think any person, any investor, when they see a youth who has skills and has integrity, mm -hmm. they will go out of their way even to invest in that youth. Mm -hmm. But the reason people will not be bothered is because you have just, it's like you have a shoe, your shoe on the wrong foot. You're armed with such good training on one end you go straight A's, your first class owners and everything. But on this other side, you need sanitization. You need to sanitize a few things yeah, so it's to a be able to fit in. Most important two things, get the skills and the soft skills. Yes, get, into the get the hardware skills market. as well as the software skills. Okay. The soft skills mm -hmm. will take you far mm -hmm. faster. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. But the issue of integrity is mm -hmm. a serious one. Many of the youths don't want to work they want that things much. very fast, yeah? They the want things yesterday, and they want to live their future now. Mm. Mm -hmm. I want my future now, here and now. Mm. No need to wait. Okay. Life doesn't work like that. Seriously. Very true. Very yes, true. Yes. Uh, still on that note, uh, take us to some of the most essential leadership behaviors uh, needed in a crisis. Wow. Yeah. Quick thinking. Mm -hmm. In a crisis situation, you must think fast. In a crisis situation, and let me, let me begin by saying, before you get into the crisis situation, you must see the crisis coming. Always, as you live your life, you must always know, in the event of crisis, what would I do? Mm -hmm. Just like when I get into this building, somebody should have showed me the fire exit. Mm. <laughs> I'm so sure we yes. have indicated somewhere. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> fire exit, yes. yes. I clearly saw, saw the fire exit. Yes. And it is not that um, I'm expecting fire, but fire can happen anytime, mm, isn't it? True. So that is one skill, preparedness, knowing that it can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, quick thinking, decision making. How fast do you make the decision? Look, you have been told there's fire that has started outside. Mm -hmm. Are you going to complete this program? <laughs> you have to no, make a decision to not. run, yes. yes, to leave the building, mm -hmm. yes. The, the skills of um, even communication. Mm -hmm. How do you communicate and who do you communicate to? If there's a fire, you will call 999. <laughs> You're not going to communicate to your mother who is very fast. Say, I hear there's a fire that is starting outside. You will figure out yes, sure. who to communicate to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And then um, you must always know as you communicate, what are you communicating? What is the message? Mm -hmm. What are you? Yes, if you're the leader, what are you instructing? Mm -hmm. Now, in a, as, a, as a disaster <laughs> expert, one of the things that I learned is um, that you must always have the plan for the crisis, mm -hmm. yes? Before the, the crisis. Before the crisis. Mm -hmm. When the crisis happens, it's not the time to call your team to say, what do we do? You should already have a demobilization plan. 
you must already have a plan for in the event this and this happens and usually in disaster situations you can almost based on data you can tell what disasters are likely to happen mm -hmm. except this one this Wuhan uh, disaster yeah that one we didn't see uh, yes we didn't see it coming but i'm sure the people who work in the health sector would um, have data relating to this kind of disaster mm. and therefore uh, communicating making the decisions and then you must have the resources also to deploy for mm. the disasters mm -hmm. um, right immediately after the, the the covid was announced you saw the president come up and say concessions yes tax relief mm -hmm. that is part of the plan you know in the event, mm -hmm. so that you relieve the citizens of the pain mm -hmm. of losing jobs and uh, having to pay more. Like you're working, if, you, if three, four of your relatives uh, lost their businesses, mm -hmm. they will definitely eat you in your house. Yeah. Yes. And so, his excellency was very well aware of that. Mm -hmm. And you also must have a plan of where to get what. Yes. You know, yeah. If there's a crisis of 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 uh, of, of, of uh, this the kind, mm -hmm. where do we get medication? Mm -hmm. Where do we get what help? Mm -hmm. If it's a, if, if it's a fire, where do we, where is the fire brigade? Where do we get the fire uh, help? Where do we get the firemen? Are the firemen alert? Are they awake? Are they on duty? All these things must be in your um, purview so that uh, when things happen, you can quickly mm -hmm. deploy what you need to deploy. Okay. Then um, if you, you're leading a team, mm -hmm. do they know what they should do? Like if they run out of this building, where's your fire assembly point, for instance? Okay. Yes, yeah, so that so when you run out of the building, you go to the fire assembly point and that, yes, yeah, so that the plan, the planned. communication Done and the understanding there. of every person on what to do. The All reason right. we say run to the fire assembly point, for instance, is so that people are not left looking for others who are already out, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Very true, so they know quite well. Yes. So uh, just winding up, so I would like to find out what do you consider to be your highest point when you worked in the space of, you know, the youth empowerment, uh, youth empowerment and sports in Embu County? In Embu County? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I, was there. I was there quite briefly, mm -hmm. but um, mobilizing the youth mm -hmm. to, the, um, to the art arena. Okay. And uh, getting uh, staff into the um, into into the talent academy. It mm -hmm. was during my time that we were able to deploy, to employ, to recruit uh, staff mm -hmm. into that academy. Mm -hmm. And of course, we refurbished the talent academy. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and then it was during that time that we mobilized the artists. Mm -hmm. Uh, began to see, okay, the youth can do something slightly more than coming to play basketball at their mm -hmm. talent academy, apart from just um, uh, doing sports. That was the time when we also got the Kenya Film Commission on board and uh, we began to train the, fil the, the youths on mm -hmm. film production and yeah. I wasn't there for very long, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have new projects coming up that the youth should look out for, and how can they reach out uh, uh, in your, you know, in your, with your team? For yes. For the information. Yes. Yeah. Um, with my team at the moment, we are looking at. The, I, I said earlier, mm -hmm. taking a film and tourism to the bottom of pyramid okay. populations, and, and we are targeting to go to every sub county and to every ward. Mm -hmm. And this is um, an initiative we are taking up with the Kenya Film Commission so that we are going to build teams from every world, every small space, film production teams. Okay. And this is something to look out for. Mm -hmm. Very soon we'll be calling upon the youths to come up mm -hmm. and uh, showcase their talents. Mm -hmm. We'll be training them also. Okay. We, are, we, are, we, we are partnering on capacity building with mm -hmm. the Kenya Film Commission. Mm -hmm. So we'll be training the youths mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And then we'll want them to produce. When they produce uh, their short films, very soon, uh, I think beginning of next year, we mm -hmm. hope to start the first um, EMBO Film Festival. And the last question here, for someone who is watching this, that they're not from Embu County, people like us, can you access these opportunities? Sure, I mean, 
Embu uh, County is within Kenya, so <laughs> these opportunities are also for Kenyans. It's just that um, we say Embu County, and but, but they are really for Kenyans. We open, you know, 30%, 30% of Kenyans are entitled to opportunities. Now we are easy, now we are easy and we're so <laughs> yes. happy. Thank you very yes. much, uh, Dr. Joan, for creating time to be with us. That was Thank an you. amazing discussion and uh, I would love for us to continue this conversation any other day. If you feel like you have any other new project that will, ex will be of help to the young people, we would love to have this conversation again. Thank you very much, Dr. Joan. Thank you. All right, that is Dr. Joan Mwendekema. She is the Embo County Minister uh, for Trade, Tourism, Investment, and industri industrialization. Yes, so guys, make sure you stay tuned. More on Entrepreneurship Tuesday will be coming your way at y 2 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me on all my social. We'll be right back. <laughs>